Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, my webinar in terms of post-secondary planning. So this presentation is geared towards grade 10 and 11 students here at BHS. However, of course, it's uh, available for everyone to view. My name is Stephanie Miller. I'm the guidance counselor at Beaconsfield High School. And I'm going to be talking about post-secondary planning for students. In terms of what we'll be discussing during this webinar, it will be graduation requirements, vocational programs. We will talk about CJEP and I will explain briefly the different styles of programs. I will talk about applications for both CJEP and vocational programs. We will also um, briefly discuss creative plans. So in terms of students that are in a position of missing prerequisites for a given program they'd like to pursue or requiring to pick up missing credits to graduate. We will also talk about resources for students with special needs uh, for post-secondary education. And we will have time to discuss career exploration resources. So in terms of my role here at BHS, I conduct personal and career counseling with students from grade seven through to grade 11. Um, the easiest way to reach me would be through email. So it would be smiller08 at lbpsb.qc.ca. Uh, as well as I'm on the Google Drive, which would be smiller08 at lbpearson.ca. In terms of guidance services in the new normal, so yes, uh, there are some slight changes to how I operate. Of course, when students meet with me in person, we must both be wearing a mask and we are socially distanced, of course, in my office. Um, I disinfect after each student. And there is a possibility of doing Zoom meetings with my grade 10 and 11 students because they have the quote unquote off day, which is to be doing independent studies. So I do recommend to my grade 10, 11 students to do a Zoom with me on their off day to limit the amount of missing of courses. But of course I can still do an in-person meeting if that's the preferred uh, route. In terms of requesting an appointment, students just have to email me. That would be the easiest avenue is to email me. Um, and then we can coordinate the best time for both our schedules to sit down and meet. Another important resource that I wanted to highlight is the guidance portion of the BHS website. When you go to the BHS website, you click on students. And if you scroll down, you'll see guidance. You click on that, it brings you to my website where a lot of important information will be posted in a timely fashion in terms of post-secondary planning documents. There's a document for Quebec High School diploma requirements. Um, access to information regarding student services professionals at BHS. So when you click on the student manual, you'll see student service professionals and you'll have access to blurbs and contact info and days of the week that the different professionals uh, that work here at BHS to support students. So definitely important to look out for um, in terms of our school nurse, our school psychologist, our school psychology intern, um, as well as our school social worker, definitely important resources that are available to students to support them at BHS. And I also will post CJEP and vocational program information. I will also post this webinar. It is being recorded and we posted to the guidance portion of the BHS website. So students have constant access to the information. Just a little heads up, uh, a word, you know, discretionary message. Of course, I am certainly not saying that students need to know their exact career at 16, 15 years old. It's, it's not normal to always know exactly what you want to do. Some of you may know, and that's wonderful, but that's not the norm. And it's okay to be unsure, okay? I just wanted to reassure everyone. The most important thing right now is to realize that career exploration is a process. And there are certain things you need to do to help uncover that process. So really what I'm encouraging is to think of a program that keeps enough of your options open. So it gives you time to figure out what you wanna do. If you already know your concrete plan and know your program of interest, that's wonderful. But if you don't, that's okay. But you wanna pick a program that keeps enough of your interests open so that it gives you time to figure out what you wanna do, right? So for my grade 10 students, it's really time to start thinking about it. You have time, you don't have to do applications till grade 11. I would encourage you to go to open houses, to research websites, to meet with me, to be proactive for grade 11. And then for my grade 11s, I highly recommend in terms of finalizing your plan, please attend open houses, please visit websites, please consult with me. Um, it's really time to start formalizing that plan. So in terms of graduation requirements here in Quebec, students need a total of 54 credits to graduate that are accumulated throughout grade 10 and 11. They must 
uh, pass their grade 10 history course, their grade 10 math, their grade 10 science, as well as their selected art education option. And then they must pass English and French in grade 11, and they must pass either their ethics and or gym class, okay? But they still do require a remaining 20 credits coming at the grade 11 level. So those are accumulated through their option courses, their contemporary world, financial education, um, their requested art option that they have, um, but they must have a total of the 54 credits as well as the required courses. Okay. Now, I do have access to all students' transcripts. You should have received one in the mail from the Ministry of Education. If there's any questions or concerns, please let me know, email me. I can always go over your transcript and help advise you in terms of courses. So, missing credits to graduate. Not that I'm trying to be negative, but it's always important to go over every possible scenario that could happen to a student, but I want students to be assured that there are always backup plans. Okay. Not everybody has to follow the same timeline or trajectory. It, it happens sometimes we had a difficult year, some courses are more difficult for others, some students need more time to complete certain courses. Everybody's in a different situation. Now, a good option would be Lester B. Pearson Summer School. That will still be available that students can um, sign up for. There's still adult education. We're lucky we have Place Cartier, an adult education center simply down the road from us. And it's used for a variety of issues for students to make, pick up any missing credits that they need to graduate, whether that they failed or did not have in their schedule. But they can also pick up prerequisites needed, like advanced prerequisites needed to go into a program in CJ. For example, their advanced science, their advanced math, physics, chemistry. And they offer a summer session, a fall session, a winter session, and a spring session. So it is very flexible and can be an excellent option. The biggest message I want to say is that if you're in a situation that you could be potentially missing credits to graduate or you're at risk of failing a course, that is something I would always recommend to talk to me about. Um, send me an email, we can do a Zoom, we can do an in-person meeting, whichever, but it is important to uh, have some advice and some direction provided by myself. Open houses. Fall 2020 open houses are upon us in this new normal of COVID times. They are all done virtually. There's pros and cons uh, to a virtual open house. Of course, the one big thing is that you can attend it from the comfort of your own home, no travel required. And also the virtual open houses, the CJEPs, have spread them out over a couple of days, which means that if you can attend a particular evening, they will also have uh, an, another date that you can attend and flexible hours. You can just log in simply to the website, okay, of the of the CJ. Uh, it brings you to virtual tours, uh, YouTube videos on programs, some of them with Zoom platforms, but again, it's all virtual. There will be question and answer, there will be contact info listed. I highly recommend grade 10 and 11 students to please attend open houses. For vocational programs, their open houses are to be determined. Um, they will have information evenings, and when I do have that information, I will provide that information to you and we'll post it on the guidance portion of the BHS website. Here is a sample handout that you can also find on the guidance website about 2020 open houses. Um, as you can see, John Abbott has, has passed. Um, this information was sent out directly to students. Don't worry if you miss, there will be winter open houses, no stress, don't worry. Um, and they will post a lot of important videos on their website. So if you were missed, don't worry, they will be backup scenarios. Um, but they're all coming up the month of October and November. And then in January, February, there will be the winter open houses. Let's talk a little bit about vocational programs. They're also called trade programs. Vocational programs, why they're different than CJEP is that you only take classes to do that specific profession. So you're not taking any option classes. You're not taking a gym course. You're not taking an English or a French. You don't have options. You only take classes that teach you to do that profession. So it's very good for a student that already has a knack for something, has a passion, has a talent for a given vocational program, and they need the hands-on training to get them to go into the workforce. Okay, so they are definitely shorter in length than CJEP programs. They range anywhere from 10 to maximum 24 months. Um, 
they are more hands-on than vocational programs, more learning by doing. They're more theoret um, sorry, they're less theoretical based and more kind of like actual putting into practice what you've learned in class. So students will have lectures in a vocational program, but then the rest of the day, they're practicing that skill that they have just learned until perfection, and then they move on to the next competency that they need to learn. They do have internships, which means that they can be a student employee in the workplace, which is part of their curriculum that they must pass. Um, very much beneficial for visual learners, of course. Um, and in terms of prerequisites, so high school diploma, of course, but you, they do mostly require your grade 10 French, English, and math. Some vocational programs, not many, do require your grade nine prerequisites, but it's an excellent option for students. Every year I have students that just have a knack for something, whether it's a student that is really good with working with cars and already, you know, works with their, their parent and already has a skill set, but needs the certified training to actually become an automobile mechanic. Um, just an example, of course, but the classes are very hands-on and you're quick to enter the workforce afterwards. They do help with job placement. So depending on what vocational center that the program is housed, they do have a center that helps with job placement. Job placement rates are excellent. Um, and definitely, you know, an excellent option for after high school. In terms of the different types of vocational programs, there are many, all right? So this is certainly not an exhaustive list, just giving you examples. There's nursing care assistants, automobile mechanics, electrician, computing support technician, professional cooking, pastry making, pharmacy assistant, there's uh, hairdressing, there's aesthetics. I mean, I, I could go on. And in terms of how, you know, in theory, that program would look, so let's say you're in the professional cooking program. You start off, obviously you have a lecture with your, your teacher. They teach you, let's say, how to make a certain recipe or knife skills or some competency that must be taught. And then the rest of the day, you're in the classroom kitchen, putting into practice what your teacher has taught you. And then as you move through the competencies and build the foundation, then you do an internship in a cooking industry type environment, whether that's with a restaurant, a catering service, a hotel. And there's obviously testing that they have to you know, complete in order to move on, but it's very hands-on. And like I said, it's for those students that already have that innate passion. And you won't find these programs offered at the CJEP level. Students can apply to both CJEP and vocational at the same time. If you're struggling between two programs, that's fine. You can get into both and just choose which one is more your, your, your passion. Um, it is also online applications. So the website is the www.shraf.com. It does not take long to do. It's really just answering your personal information, uh, drop down menu to pick your program. It shows you which center in Montreal offers that training and you pick it because obviously other school boards offer similar programs in Lester B. So you're, you, know, you would pick which appropriate location is good for you. And some programs will require you to do an interview just to make sure that you are a good candidate for the program. There's ongoing applications throughout the year, which means that there's no specific deadline for a vocational program. It is recommended, of course, if you're thinking of applying to follow the same kind of mandate as CJEC, which we'll get into in a couple of slides. So usually early March, early May, April, get that application in, do it online. That way you kind of have a plan for, for the fall or for, an, for whenever you choose, of course, the start date of the vocational program. We're going to switch gears and talk about CJEP programs and the two main categories of programs that are found at all CJEPs. There are three-year career programs and two-year pre-university programs. So what that means is that for a two-year pre-university program, it's inherent in the name. It's preparing students to go on to university. It has the prerequisites built into the curriculum to go on to pursue university studies. You cannot work after the, those two years of study. Okay? You have to go on in education. Examples of programs would be social sciences, sciences, visual arts, arts, literature, communications, uh, double decks, which we'll go into in a little bit. And it's more theory-based, so very similar to the type of instruction that they have here at Beaconsfield High School. Okay, And in the two-year pre-university programs, and three-year career programs, all students have to take English courses, they have to take French courses and option classes outside their program. So they are different than vocational in the sense that they are a little bit less specific because you're still taking classes outside your program of interest. 
three-year career programs are three years of length. They, per, they are preparing students to go on into the world of work. Okay, so after a three-year career program, you can enter the workforce. They are hands-on and more learning by doing, similar to the vocational programs. However, they still make you take the English and French and option classes. So you still are slightly pursuing other things outside your program of interest. And they also do have internships like the vocational programs, which means that if you are in a, a three-year career program, part of your curriculum is having to do a week or a couple months internship um, in a workplace, putting into practice what you've learned in your courses, okay? Examples of programs, so many, which I'll talk a little bit more about the different industries, but there's police technology, um, ultrasound technician, dental hygiene, police technology, pre-hospital emergency, or paramedic care, excuse me, the list goes on. In terms of two-year pre-university programs, what I thought I'd do is kind of give you a little bit of sample of what they study in those courses, and then give you some ideas of what sometimes students will pursue at the university level. In terms of the social science program, this is for students in terms of wanting to study psychology, business, law, uh, geography, history. Um, they may want to also do anthropology, sociology courses. You may have heard of social sciences psychology profile, social science commerce profile, social science math profile, and every CGIP has some different profiles with, uh, available at their institution. Um, and students after this will go on potentially into business, Perhaps they'll go into accounting, perhaps they'll go into teaching, maybe they'll do psychology, social work, um, law, uh, political science, sociology, um, so many different options. In terms of arts literature communications program, so that also is a program that has a lot of mini profiles within it, but students will have access to art classes, broadcasting, journalism, creative writing, uh, photography courses, music courses, and they can learn a second or third language, so Spanish, German, Italian. So it's a little bit more of a creative field. Students can go on to university in communication studies, broadcasting, journalism, create, they can go into literature, they can go into linguistics, they can go into teaching, they can go into another art related program, okay? Um, so just examples. The visual arts program, it used to be called fine arts is also an option for students that are, are artists that enjoy the painting, drawing, sketching, sculpting. They do some computer generated art as well. And it's preparing those students to go on to university in a visual arts or fine arts related program. Also going to teaching, <laughs> example. The sciences program. So those are for our students from high school that have done their grade 10 advanced science, their grade 10, 11 advanced math, They've completed their grade 11 physics and chemistry, and they will take the CGIP level science courses uh, in terms of programs they would go on into university. Of course, the world is their oyster. They could go into medicine, dentistry, dietetics, occupational therapy, physiotherapy, exercise science, um, but they also could go into teaching. They could also go into psychology. They could also go into business, okay? It doesn't close those doors. Um, but generally, they're preparing to go into a science-related university program. Double decks. A double deck is basically a student is taking two two-year pre-university programs at the same time. Okay, so it means they're three years in length, but it's only because they're taking two programs at the same time. So it adds on one extra year, but the student graduates having a firm knowledge base in two two-year pre-university programs. Not all the CJEPs have them, particularly John Abbott, um, Vanier College, and Marianopolis have double decks. And for example, students can do a double deck in sciences and social sciences. They can do a double deck in arts and sciences. They can do double decks in social science and music, science and music. Um, they can do double decks in arts and literature communications, um, and for example. So that's really, a, could be an excellent idea for a student that has passions and can't decide between two given programs and just would like to keep their options open. And that's a wonderful idea because when they graduate, they know a lot about two different fields and really helps them to tailor what they want to do in university. Quick cautionary word about pathways or explorations programs, they are called. Uh, those are programs for students missing prerequisites to get into either a two, to get into a two-year pre-university program. There also are for three-year career, which I'll talk about in a second. 
But for example, you may have heard of pathways to sciences at John Abbott, exploration sciences at Dawson, exploration sciences at Banyay. It's for students missing science cracks, not missing all of them, but some of them, okay? So in that situation, if you're a student wanting to apply to a program in, in CJAP to pick up prerequisites, this is something you'd want to consult with me about because it is very particular for a student. And I really want to make sure that I know your typical, your profile and what you're missing and make sure that you're a good candidate for those programs because they are competitive to get into. So when it comes to Pathways Explorations programs or needing to pick up missing prerequisites, please see Ms. Miller. Okay, so for three-year career programs at the CJEC, we have three-year career programs so many different programs, more than the two-year pre-university program. So what I did, you know, for time's sake, um, was categorize them into different uh, kind of technologies or different kind of categories um, or industries, excuse me. But I'll just give you examples, not complete list of different programs that fall into those different industries. So if you look at the business technologies, there's business administration, accounting technology, computer science, these programs allow students to do three years and then be able to enter the workforce in those areas. They, like I said, they do internships, definitely an excellent uh, option. Um, and not all of them require the advanced math um, to get in. So definitely good options for students, still required obviously good grades, um, but definitely good option. Fine art technologies. So we have professional music, we have professional theater, we have graphic design, we have 3D animation, so many neat programs within the kind of the artistic side, so to speak. And these are excellent ideas for students, definitely. And there's different ones across the different CJEPs. So that's why going to open houses and checking out their websites is very important, okay? Health science technologies. There's paramedic care, nursing, dental hygiene. Uh, and a lot of them do not require your advanced science correct. Some require a couple, some require none at all. So definitely good options for students that, get, that offer excellent career options. Community service technologies, police technology, youth and adult correctional intervention, special care counseling, just examples. So of course, this is not an exhaustive list. I'm just trying to pick your curiosity enough to do a little bit more research or meet with me or go to open houses to find out more options because three year career programs can be an excellent option for a student, okay? Especially if they're more hands-on and not sure how much time they wanna to commit to education. Do they necessarily want to pursue uh, university studies? They still can after a three-year career program, should they wish. They would just have to make sure that they had their prerequisites to go on and do that, but it's definitely possible. So it doesn't close the door to further education, but it also opens the door that you can work right after those three years. When I'm talking about prerequisites, I'm talking about grades, you're probably wondering, where do I access this information? So of course, going to open houses as well as CJEC websites, but I also post um, handouts that are given to me by the CJEPs that tell, say all the programs that are offered at their institution, what prerequisites they may or may not need, they may just need their high school diploma, as well as the recommended overall averages to have to be a strong candidate to be accepted. They are just estimates. It's not given that if you have those grade requirements, you're automatically guaranteed to get in, but it's a good um, medium to use to advise yourself on how you measure up academically for a program. So whenever you're picking a program, you want to make sure you have the prerequisite courses, you meet the grade cutoffs, and do you require any supporting documents? And supporting documents could be you have to do an entrance test, an interview, a letter of intent, a letter of reference. Not many of them do require that, but it's important now that you look into it, now that you have the time before applications in March to do that research and start preparing those documents should you need them. Now, I do post these um, cutoffs and this information in the guidance office. So you are definitely welcome to come and visit. Uh, please practice social distancing measures and please do not do a gathering, whatnot. Make sure you're wearing your mask, but you can come take a photo with your cell phone if you'd like um, to get some information about the grades. Um, but again, they are just suggestions. They are not guarantees that you will get in always aim to do as well as you possibly can to increase your candidacy. The other thing I wanted students to know about CJ programs is that you can always switch programs if you're unhappy in a program, all right? You just see an academic advisor and they will switch you. If you're really unsure, you've done all the work, come March, 
uh, you've gone to open houses, you've met with me, you've, you've, you've used different resources, and you're just still unsure. That is okay. There's, that happens. There's nothing wrong with that. My advice would to be to pick more of a general program where you get to pick more your courses. Okay, so for example, social sciences general profile or arts literature communications multidisciplinary profile. It allows students to kind of tailor their program based on their interests, gives you more time to figure out what it is you're passionate about. So mark and cars for programs, like I said, you can always email me directly for that information. If you don't have time to come down to the guidance office, there's no problem, happily provide that for you. Um, like I said, um, if you do come to the guidance office, please be careful and please um, practice social distancing rules and best practices in terms of the COVID situation. Quick word about pre-admission testing for two three-year career programs offered at John Abbott College. Just um, some updates for the police technology. It does have a pre-admission test. However, due to COVID, it's currently canceled and they have advised guidance counselors to recommend checking their website regularly for updates in case um, there are uh, there is a possibility of a, of a fall um, testing date or perhaps they will do one in the new year. Same thing for the paramedic care. Uh, their testing date, it's hoped, hoped that it will be able to be planned for March 2020, but please again, check the website regularly for updates. So supporting documents, as I mentioned, as I mentioned, if you need a letter of intent, if you need a letter of reference, portfolios, for example, art programs or three-year career programs, sometimes they require a portfolio or a letter of intent or an interview. Um, many of the two-year pre-university programs do not. Uh, specifically, the honors programs do require letters of reference and letters of intent. So I'm not trying to stress you out, just good to know this and know that if there are a couple of programs that you're thinking about, um, you need to start preparing those documents and, and, and making sure that they're uh, ready to go for when the application deadline is upon us. Now, uh, more than ever in the past years, every, there's always been online application, but even uploading documents has gone electronic, and especially during times of COVID, um, everything is going to be uh, virtually online and uploaded online. Um, so you will understand that, and I will obviously do uh, closer to application season, I will do um, you know, a sample demonstration of an online uh, application, not difficult to do at all, um, but it is, you, you need to be made aware that everything is mostly transmitted electronically. The other thing is, is that all students are going through different situations. We're all, you know, all students have different struggles. Maybe uh, they had a, a life stressor that affected their ability to perform as strong academic, academically as they normally do. Um, you can write a letter uh, to support your application to explain the extenuating circumstance. You can also highlight any volunteering or work-related experience or anything that you think admissions needs to know about you to increase your candidacy. You can put that in the form of a letter. You must save it as a PDF format and you can directly upload it to your application and admissions will view that letter, okay? Uh, it could help in terms of increasing your candidacy. The student needs help with that. I certainly can over oversee the letter and, and, and take a look and give you suggestions, but it just, I want you to be, to be aware that if there is an extenuating circumstance, there is a possibility of sharing that with the admissions team. In terms of evaluating your application, so to be announced in terms of the grade 10 marks, because there was no uh, ministry exams, the CGEPs are still uh, waiting for directives from the ministry about whether they will be looking at the grade 10 report cards given from the local high schools um, because the marks on the transcripts is just REUSIT or no REUSIT, so N-R-E-U or R-E-U or REUSIT. Um, so more information to come about how they will evaluate the grade 10 marks. What I can clarify for sure is that they will only be seeing term one of grade 11 because the term ends in January. So therefore it's way before the application deadline. Um, so they will be seeing grade 11. What does this mean? Well, of course for grade 10 students, you can keep working hard in grade 10. The situation will hopefully um, be resolved come time for your application. But for grade 11s, it does mean please be working hard for term one of grade 11. The good news with the two terms being worth 50%, term one is longer. There is time, there is time to do better. There is time to correct the situation should you feel that your marks are weaker. 
We have time, but please act now and please consult with your teachers. Ask for help when needed. Go to office hours. Um, please be making sure to be working hard on your off day. Um, it is an extenuating, you know, uh, unprecedented times, I should say. Um, and we will do our best to support you as the teachers are doing. But please, really, term one of grade 11, work as hard as you possibly can. Another recommendation for marks uh, in terms of being accepted for CJEP. And CJEPs really want your grade 11 English to be 68% or higher and your French to be 65% or higher. If you have marks under those cutoffs, it makes it quite difficult to get into CJEP. Um, not impossible, but difficult. So of course, don't just aim for those cutoffs. Please aim to do as well as you possibly can. You can send letters to CJEP electronically, like I said before. So just a quick word about that, especially like I said, if your periods are weaker, um, that can be done. You can explain the situation. CJEPs do want to hear from you, okay? So when you're doing the application procedure or you have questions for CJEPs, or you have questions about your candidacy, uh, they are still working, the admissions teams. They often either have a Google form to fill out and then they will contact you, or you can email them directly or you can call them. Okay, so you have to consult the admissions website of each uh, CJEP uh, websites, of course, to, to find out their protocol, their specific CJEP protocol, but they will advise uh, students and parents, okay? In terms of missing prerequisites, we mentioned this a little bit before when I I'm really, you know, my, my little message in red is meet with me for help. Don't do that on your own. This is something you really would want to consult with a guidance counselor about. But just some examples. Every year I have students in grade 10, 11 that are simply just missing that advanced map, okay, from grade 10, 11, whether it's TS or SN. You can actually pick that up while being in CJEP in social sciences. You get in and then they'll allow you to integrate that into your schedule. It takes two semesters, so one year, because the first semester you do grade 10, second semester you do grade 11. You're still taking CJEP courses at the same time, so it's not a waste. And you have your advanced math to switch into social science commerce, social science math profile, social science international business. It depends what you're what you're hoping to get into. Um, you also can do summer school and adult ed after grade 11. You can also do adult education courses at the same time as being in the CJEP program, because at that point, you're considered an adult. So adults can't mix with the youth sector, but you can, when you're in CJEP, you can do adult ed in the evenings and do CJEP in the day. So adult ed, you can be doing your, whatever prerequisites you wanna pick up. And then once you've completed them, you see an active advisor and you request your program change once you've completed those prerequisites. Um, like I was saying for Pathways to Sciences, you know, just a quick word about that. That's available at John Abbott. It's for students missing one to two science prerequisites. Not recommended three, but one to two. So a typical student profile would be a student uh, did advanced science in grade 10. They did their grade 10, 11 advanced math, but they never took physics or chemistry. They, and they have good grades. <laughs> they would be a candidate to go into pathways. But again, we want to come and consult with me first. Uh, exploration sciences at Dawson, exploration sciences at Vanier is for a student that has minimum just their grade 10 advanced math, then they're eligible to apply to that program to pick up the remaining science prerequisites to eventually go into a science related program at the CJEP, it would depend, okay? There is pathways to a career program at John Abbott as well. So for a student missing prerequisites to get into a career program, they can apply to that. It is a small program, it is competitive to get in. So again, you have to have good marks. And again, you must meet with me to make sure it's a good plan. Again, our other backup plans, but just wanted to give you some examples, okay? Now we're gonna talk about the application procedures for CJEP. So the standard deadline to apply to CJEP every year for grade 11 students is always March 1st. It has been that way for all time, okay? So basically how this works is students do an online application that is not difficult, nothing to stress about. I promise you, you're all very technologically advanced, better than me in some cases. And it really just takes you know, a couple of minutes of your time, you're answering personal identifying information, drop down menu to pick your college, drop down menu to pick your CJEP, you pay with a visa card. If there's any supporting documents, you upload them directly to that application. Click submit, you print the final app, you know, final page to say that the application was a success for your files. You're done. So nothing to stress about, okay? But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. In terms of applications, okay. If we start with the private CJEP applications like Marinopolis, Centennial, O'Sullivan, LaSalle, 
Again, their deadline is March 1st, but you can, they're all on a separate application. So you can apply to as many private colleges as you want because they're on separate applications. They do cost a bit more than the public, so it can range anywhere between $80 or $100, um, but they are on separate applications, so you can absolutely do that. In terms of the public colleges, they're split up onto three main application sites. So for Champlain College, St. Lambert, and for Dawson College, they, as listed here, they have both their different application sites. And you get to put two choices on that application. Your first choice and then your backup choice. First choice is what you really want to get into. Your second choice is your backup, something that is easier to get in, lower grades, less prerequisites. Because they'll only consider your second choice if they can't admit you to your first choice. Okay, so that, that is important in terms of your strategy. Um, again, deadline's March 1st, then you'll find out April, May, if you've been accepted to your first or second choice. The SRAM application hosts quite a few CJEPs, French and English CJEPs. And on this application, it's a little bit different. It has three rounds of admission, three equal opportunities to get into CJEP in the fall, but it breaks it up into a three interval process. The deadline for the first round is March 1st, okay? Per round, you can only pick one program at a CJEP. So because John Abbott and Vanier are both listed on the SRAM application, you have to pick between them per round. So what this means is, is that for the first round, you could pick a program at John Abbott. If you get accepted, wonderful, accept your spot, you're done. You don't have to participate in the other two rounds. However, if you weren't accepted the first round, that's okay. You just log back into your application, you pick a different program. You don't have to pay again or anything like that. You just log back in and you pick, you could pick the same program at John Abbott if there's still room and it will tell you if there is in that program, or you can switch and apply to a program at Vanier or perhaps a French CJ. Okay, so you have to pick between them per round, but you can switch if you're not accepted as the rounds go on. So what that means is that if you're not accepted for the first round, you'll find out early April. You'll have two weeks to log back in and pick a different choice for the second round. Then you'll find out early May if you were accepted for the second round. If you weren't, that's okay. You can then two weeks have two weeks to apply for the third round. And then you'll find out early June if you've been accepted. Okay. Uh, it doesn't matter which round you get accepted. You still start CJEP in the fall. Okay. They just break it up into this process. Don't get discouraged if you don't get accepted right away. Still keep going. Don't, you know, feathers are getting in, you know, everybody's situation is different. Um, please don't get discouraged and still keep going. I will always recommend to apply to more than one program, whether that's a CJEP and a vocational program at the same time, or two CJEPs or two vocational programs. Never put all your eggs in one basket. It's always good to have a plan A and a plan B. But of course, as long as the CJEPs you picked are on separate applications, you can apply to as many as you want, okay? So as I said, deadline is March 1st. I would recommend applying one week to two weeks before the application deadline. It's not first come first serve. They only review all the applications after March 1st. So it's better to make an informed decision than a rush decision, okay? Um, the costs for public 30 to 35, private 80 to 100. And we do have an entente for Vanier, Dawson, Champlain de la Belle, John Abbott and Marinopolis where we send your marks automatically. If you're applying to another private college other than Marinopolis, if you're applying to another school outside of Quebec, another country, then we do not obviously have an arrangement. Please consult me and I can make arrangements to send your marks. Hmm. Okay, so for students with special needs, what I mean by that is students who have an IEP, an individual, individual education plan. It could be for a learning disability, it could be for ADHD, it could be for a mental health reason, it could be for a medical reason, okay? That is a legal document that throughout your elementary and high school, perhaps depends when it started, that you were legally entitled to certain accommodations in the school to support your learning. Now, you still are eligible for those accommodations at CJEP. They may be different depending on the CJEP situation, but you have to seek an appointment out with uh, the center, the re their equivalent of resource, which would be called the access center, you have to request for a meeting to put into place your kind of support strategies at CJEP. So they won't seek you out. You have to seek them out once you've been accepted at whatever CJEP you've been accepted in. So you there, it would be by email. There is a form now because of course it's COVID. So things are being done more virtually, um, but a meet intake meeting will be set up. And I would say 
I, some students get shy about this, do not be shy. You are entitled to these accommodations. Some will be similar or look a bit different at the CGEP setting, but please, if they help to support you academically during your high school experience, they will help you with your CGEP experience. And it is important that you do contact the appropriate um, center to, at the CGEP to set up those services for you. Okay. Just some resources for John Abbott. This is the website for their access center for students with special needs. There is Vanier and there's also uh, Dawson Colleges as well. Okay. And again, I will be posting this uh, webinar to the BHS website, so you can always refer back. Resources for career exploration. Okay, so talked a lot about different information. I know it's a lot of information to digest for you guys. So thank you for your patience. Uh, now for the fun part, the part where you get to figure out what types of resources will help me. Well, we talked about open houses, but an amazing tool for career exploration is Zello. X-E-L-L-O, Zello. Zello is a career exploration site that Lester B has bought user rights for all students across grade seven to 11, but I highly recommend my grade 10 and 11s to start using it now. If you haven't already, you have access to so many different things. You have access to career tests, personality tests, learning style tests, resume and CV help, uh, CV help okay? Uh, you have to log in through your student fusion portal be logged into your Google Drive at the same time, and the little Zello icon will pop up. You'll click on it and you'll say, hello, Stephanie, uh, welcome. And what do you want to do today? And you can choose what, what, what you want to do. Do you want to just research careers? Do you want to do a test? Um, it's excellent. It's a really, really good first start for you, those of you that are really unsure. Uh, I can log into your results you know, when we have a meeting and that helps me to advise you better. It's really, it's like a Facebook account that saves everything you've done and that you can share and like and plan your future. It's wonderful and it's free and it has reputable information. There is a YouTube video posted on the guidance portion of the BHS website that walks you through how to use Zello. It's created by Andrew Fraser, as you can see here on the screen another guidance counselor who uh, created that amazing YouTube video to give you the lay of the land of how to use Zello. Okay, so this is kind of the interface, what it would look like, okay? So you can actually upload pro profile pictures, background photos, you can save the careers that you like. Um, it can also create a CV for yourself. You can add volunteering experiences. You can just, with the little, uh, as you see the little magnifying glass on the top right corner, you can also just research careers, okay? Now resources for vocational programs. So for vocational programs, the www.emploi.avenir.gouv.ca is an excellent website for students to research vocational programs in Quebec. The Take Your Pick magazine, unfortunately I cannot uh, put them out in the guidance office. I can give you one because we can't have the exchange of multiple hands on documents. So I can give you uh, Take Your Pick magazine, which is basically the vocational Bible that lists all the different uh, vocational programs in the island of Montreal, uh, tells you where they're offered, uh, and a lot of other useful information in the magazine. Lester B. Pearson has an excellent website for our vocational programs, which is listed here. Uh, they have little uh, YouTube videos, they give you a demonstration of a program. Uh, they will be having open virtual open houses as well, or information sessions, so please check out their websites. And if you want to learn more just on what's out there, you don't necessarily know what program is interesting to you, just check out the main site and sort through. Uh, just take some time with it. There's a lot of wonderful vocational programs out there, and the websites are excellent. So a little bit more resources for CGEP and other things. So pigma.ca is a website that talks about all the different CGEP programs that are across all those different applications that we went through. Okay, so both um, for the, uh, the public and the private. Uh, Jobbank.gc.ca slash quiz home is also a good resource for career exploration and looking at the job market. 16personalities.com is a lot of fun because it basically is a career test that tells you what type of personality style, what type of professions would, would you be thriving in or successful in that suit kind of your style, all right? Very interesting, also very entertaining. CGEP websites, as I mentioned before, are excellent for career exploration. The guidance website, please check regularly throughout this year. Livecareer.com is excellent for resume building, free template, CV, let, cover letter writing, excellent, excellent website, please check it out. And candler.ca is good for looking about scholarships and volunteering opportunities for students as well. 
As I mentioned before about applications, I will most likely do another webinar closer to the date, um, probably in February, uh, in terms of practice applications. You can do a practice application for both uh, John Abbott and Dawson, just to, it's not a real one, but if you're nervous about it and you just want to get a sense for what it's about, follow these links. Uh, you might have to make a little account for yourself, but it's just a practice application. It's not the real thing. That helps you to feel more confident to do the real thing. I would encourage you to follow these links. Questions. So I know that many of you may have questions, completely normal. Do not be shy. So I thank you very much for your attention during this webinar. I hope that it, you uh, are feeling motivated and inspired to start doing some post-secondary planning. Please do not hesitate to email me with questions, please do not hesitate to request a meeting with me, whether that's in person or through Zoom. I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, please know that we will all get through these times uh, together. We're all BHS, we are a BHS family. And I thank you for your attention and I hope you guys have an amazing school year. Bye for now.